I love the layout of our raised beds. Mm. It kind of has that feel of a um, English castle garden. Guten gardening, everybody. I'm here in Canada. Actually, I'm near the Thousand Islands area, right across the border from the US. And I'm at Hickory Croft Farm. And this is the first of three videos where we're gonna take a look at some of the amazing stuff that they do here surrounding gardening, all the animals, and all of the canning, preserving, and other work. Now this is gonna be a three-part series where we focus on each of those areas. The first video is gonna be about the garden. The second video is gonna focus in on the animals and all the different pieces of production that those animals provide. And in the third video, we're gonna take a look at another channel that Hickory Croft has about pantry living. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by meeting the folks from Hickory Croft Farm, but I'm really excited. And there's gonna be a link to their channels in the description of each of these videos. So we're here with Steph and Chris from Hickory Croft Farm. We're in Ontario, Canada, which is Grow Zone. 5B here, but the Canadian zones are a little different. Okay, so, so I think it's the equivalent of 4B. 4B, so uh, probably a little bit shorter growing season than what we have in our 5A in Wisconsin, but we're gonna take a tour of the garden. So let's go ahead and get started. We're here at the entrance to the garden. So how much space have you dedicated? You have a 38 acre farm. How much space have you dedicated to your garden itself? So actual gardening space we're about an eighth of an acre if you include our fruit thicket or oh. the food forest i guess you can call it depending on how you look at that but it's kind of a mixture of in ground raised beds a little bit of tilled and a little bit of stuff that's kind of in transition i love the cattle panel it's one of the things that we've talked about transportation of these has got to be a bear how did you get them here <laughs> The trailer. Well, the, tra the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I, need, I need to invest in a bigger vehicle, like, I look think. Look at that one with the beans on it going right over the top. It's oh, so yeah. I always imagine oh, that's wedding stunning. Beans, a wedding in the beans. No, that's absolutely stunning. I love that. I've se I saw somebody recently doing grapes with this, too, which is really cool. We've got our grapes on that oh, one. Oh, yeah, you do have Although grapes on that Japanese one. Japanese beetles this year. You've, not yet for us, so we'll we'll try to keep them up your way. Although I'm sure you don't appreciate that very much. <laughs> so then, um, you've been gardening. Well, here I'll I'll come over and film you two a little bit. So you've been gardening for how long? Is this a whole life thing? Like you you were raised this way? Well, <laughs> born this way. You can start and I'll finish. <laughs> I started when I met him. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's, but that's you've been good. doing it longer than me. I've been doing it longer, so my parents did garden when I was a kid, and I think I've told this story before, uh, but I didn't participate as much as I probably should have mm. at the time. But later in life, after I had gone to college, I kind of had this epiphany, having to buy my own food, that it's like, I can probably grow some of this. And it really started with squash. I guess that's my thing, is squash. I can grow squash cheaper than I can buy it in the store. So back in 2008, that's basically what I did. And it's kind of just gone Spiraled. from there. <laughs> so that's, that's impressive. And actually I know squash is your thing because I've seen several of your videos on squash and you are quite knowledgeable, especially I was watching it. Uh, um, we gave away some seeds to some squash that had actually cross pollinated and I didn't realize it. And I watched your video on cross pollination. That was a couple. That was probably two years ago, maybe. I'm trying maybe to think. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The various yeah. species of squash. Lear and... Learned a little bit. I <laughs> learned a little bit of a lesson. Well, at least they learned a lesson because I gave them the seeds. <laughs> Which is fantastic. So, in this area, um, are there any vegetables that are like these are the prolific vegetables that you? Oh, look at your sweet potatoes. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're doing really well this year, which is awesome because we actually didn't grow them last year and we were on the fence as to whether we were going to keep going with them. But kind of over the last couple of years, we keep changing some of our, I guess, what we would like to grow for diet. Number one comment on almost every single one of my sweet potato videos is, did you know you can eat the leaves? That's one of my I know, comments. yeah. <laughs> but that milky substance that's in there, whenever you, do you ever get the stain from that on your clothes when you're harvesting? You no, ever notice I that? No, I don't think we ever have. Yeah, uh, whenever, um, well, I don't want to ruin your stuff, but there's like that milky, oh, yeah. the milky I've, substance I've there. I've come out of the uh, Yeah, stems. out of the stem. So yeah. you get it on your hands and you'll have like the black stuff. You get it on your clothes, that, that yeah, good luck it with that. It doesn't come out. But is there, is there a, a vegetable or are there vegetables that you would say these are what 
we, I mean, these are gonna be prolific producers. These would be fantastic. Beets. Uh, oh my goodness. Beets are definitely up there. Yeah, they, they are. Beets, I would say, are very easy to Look at these grow. beauties in here. But they do, I mean, we, we do some oh, seed saving man. and stuff with beets, and that makes it a little more complicated, but they're oh. definitely easy on the easy scale. Prolific, I'm gonna have to say my three top picks for prolific vegetables would be um, tomatoes, yep. kind of a no-brainer, I guess. Yep. Pole beans, okay, even yep. though I know some bush beans can be very prolific, the pole beans are just, for the <laughs> space allocated, are super prolific. Especially if you have a setup like that. I mean, that's just, oh, that's marvelous. Uh, they're, they're doing really good this year, which is which is awesome. And uh, what's the third? What's your third? I would probably say lettuce. Lettuce. Uh, those would be probably my, my top three picks. Now, if you have more space, other things might be in yeah. there too, but... I think those those are definitely my top last year. Okay. We had a lot of trouble with uh, yeah. cucumber beetles. And so we actually switched to, this is a different kind of, this is the lemon. Is the lemon, yellow ones? Yeah. yeah. They're round they're little, and right, yellow. Yeah. You know, Love we've them. we tried to grow them twice. Haven't had success yet, but they're delicious. I agree. Mm -hmm. Beautiful kale underneath there. Yes, the kale's struggling a little bit with the... Uh... Doesn't like the, <laughs> well, that competition, but also the heat. It's not... The heat and dry we had is can handle the doing... cold, but the yeah. Don't yeah. Like the, uh... Is this yeah. lemongrass? Yep, we're good. We're getting back into growing some lemongrass. I'm actually going to try to overwinter some in the house. Okay, see if it's I can beautiful keep it going. too. I thought the, the added benefit is beautiful. Mm -hmm. that's, the uh, rosemary, rosemary. That's what the third winter. Third yeah, year? that's a three-year-old. You know what? I was when we went to um, where were we? Florida. I saw no. It was, California, San Diego. I saw a, like a six foot tall rosemary, and first we never overwintered ours, and so I was like, we treated it as an annual. Okay, they yeah. they get massive. I That's beautiful. Yeah, we just chop it down yep. over the like, I, we let it grow until what? It starts to kind of dry out in January, February, and then I chop all that off, and then we get all new growth every spring again. So love it. We do have to put it in the porch, but yeah, right, right. Yeah. Still, uh, well, the winter's here pretty my pretty uh, not mild, pretty rough or. Uh, we had a good two weeks of below minus 20 Celsius. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Fahrenheit, I'm terrible. We, 80, no. It was uh, the other way. So probably, I don't know either. Is that five degrees? It's lower than that. I'm trying to think Fahrenheit. Minus 20. I'll look it up. I'll put it I'll put it above what it is. Because <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. You're not kidding about the lettuce here. What what variety is this? Which one's this one? <laughs> that is... like a is, fire or something or other? Uh, red... Outrageous. Outred, outrageous. Outrageous. Like wow. the color red. That is outrageous. Uh, <laughs> so this was a new one we tried this year and loved it. So we got it going to seed. Going to and, seed. Yeah, and collect from it. That's what, that's actually one of the things I love about lettuce is you can basically it doesn't like to cross. Yeah. So I've talked to uh, others who have tried to purposely cross it and it doesn't it doesn't cross well. So, so you can this, plant them pretty you close. You can plant them pretty close. That's and, and great sort to of know. When you get varieties you like, you can obviously yeah. get a lot of seeds. Like we've got. Yeah, uh, you're not kidding about the seeds. Oof. Black seeded Simpson is kitty corner there. Oh yeah, and it's right. going to seed as well, so we can collect this year. This looks a little happier. This kale. <laughs> yeah, That's it gets shaded here from the big tree. What, so learning what, curve. What's the flower here? This is uh, the scarlet runner beans. Oh. So these are. Look at those beautiful. Doing flowers. pretty good. They'll. they'll kind of bush out a little bit more as the season goes on. Uh, I love that flower. And the hummingbirds love it too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, yeah. To the sure. point where when it really gets flowering, they uh, are pretty protective over it. Which brassica? This is bok choy. So oh, it's bok choy. We're hoping to... Do you remember the, species, the variety? I don't know. It's the rare red left. one. Yeah, this is... I'll have to look up the variety, but... Um, We've grown it in the past, and we wanted to see if we could get it to go to seed, and obviously it worked. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see. Man, you got so much lettuce on here. You have the stuff going to seed. Look at that. Well, and we we've harvested, we've harvested so much. quite a bit. Yeah, we you can see it. You in, can see uh, it up off the. Yeah, because we kind of plant like a patch, and then harvest off of that, and then right. usually we're like two say or three it. of them go to seed. We've, we've let more than we need to go to seed, but. And you can see how much time we spent. And this is just one of the beds. So we're going to keep looking through the garden as I keep asking questions. But we just found a whole bunch of peppers. So the weird thing about peppers to me is it looks like nothing, nothing, And then nothing. all of a sudden, boom. There's 50 of them. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening here? Do you let them stay on until they're red? Yes, red? these will go quite red. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but they're doing really well and I, for us this is kind of early to actually get peppers on them we're not this far along with our peppers no. i'll tell you that well this one's these ones we we actually moved them out of the greenhouse really early because we were putting them in the raised bed and we have like the plastic cover so we can cover this oh, okay if it is a threat of frost or something so we actually moved these out in may it was mm -hmm. before may long weekend because wow. wow. we thought we you know what what's the worst that can happen and uh now you'll see our other ones in the other garden and they're not doing well, so I just, well i just toured somebody else's garden who said that their peppers got really stressed because they went out early but mm, they had some pretty rough Bad weather, weather. And shortly yeah. thereafter yeah it's amazing how they just find their way though too i mean i know you have to do some upkeep upkeep with the beans but these ones are doing pretty good although no yeah. beans yet which i was actually quite surprised no the flowers sure. are there the flowers are there so they'll be it's only start these have only started flowering in the last couple days yeah, yeah. so, so Give it a week. <laughs> this rain will really You'll be get covering it. Again. Yeah, absolutely. I really like. Did you build all the raised beds here? We did, and, and we, we brought some we with actually, us. We actually we built some where we used to live, and we brought them all with us, which was quite an ordeal. Well, I should have asked that question. How long have you been here on this farm with this garden? We've been here since 2019. Yes, fall. Okay. we moved. Basically, it was Halloween was the day we moved <laughs> and, and uh, auspicious day it's our yes. fourth growing season here. here okay and we didn't really get the garden set up until the following spring okay so but you've brought some you've built some it's yes. i don't know lumber went crazy during the pandemic we yes. took a bit of a hiatus on new gardens at yep. that point and just kind of worked with what we had so what do we got in here? This is this is all yellow summer neck squash, summer yeah. squash, summer squash, and some tomatoes. But they're getting dragged out. I see oh, you this got here took a bit of a beating in the rain. But... Yeah, you can see lots of again, lots of male flowers about yeah. to open up here. We're pretty early Perfect. for these guys, so yeah, they really uh, they were slow to start this year, and then they just kind of ballooned to what they are at the moment. You know, so, it's, it's, it's it's like we're. We're zones apart, miles apart, but kilometers apart, excuse me. <laughs> but we're experiencing some of the same things. I see what you're talking about, by the way. Your raspberries. Yes, the, the menace that is our uh, yellow raspberry varieties. They we have, have the best of, of intentions. You know what? The go over. golden raspberries are my favorite. Oh, They're very good. But, look on the but they, they, for whatever reason, they fall faster than my other ones. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're bigger too. They so se They seem to, you come out and you check them and they're kind of very small, very yep. green. And you come out the next day and they've just ballooned up to ripe. They're and then the next day, they're if you don't get them, they're gone. They're the ones that my insects love to get into the most too. I don't know if you experienced that, but. Uh, well, we had trouble with Japanese beetles oh, wow. uh, last year. Uh -huh. Actually eating quite a bit of the fruit. But uh, this year, knock on wood, uh, we haven't had too much issue. They're so sweet. There's so mm -hmm. many on they're the so ground. sweet. There's so many on the ground. Uh, definitely, one thing we find too is they're a little more delicate from like, yeah. if you don't store them right away. Yeah. So that kind of makes them a delicacy because it's not something you can just readily go and buy. Compared right. To the red one. So it's right. definitely something if you have the opportunity to grow it and the space to grow it, it's totally worth it. This is, I'm um, assuming, just like mine, um, thornless? Pretty much. The Some of the stalks, I, I would call it thornless. There's a few, a few little, the older yeah, ones right, that right. have a, uh, very, very mild thorns on them. But That's beautiful. Compared to your average raspberry. Right. Pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> it doesn't nice. feel bad. Well, you got a handful there. There are oh, so I... many on the ground. It <laughs> makes me sad. I know. It's, it's hard when you, you, the, you know, crop loss. Hey, we do the same thing. These are an interesting experiment. So we actually, they're blue barrels, but instead of putting the holes in the bottom for drainage, mm -hmm. we put them in the side. Okay. Because we were trying it for onions because when we get dry years, the onions don't do great. Right. It didn't work great for onions. So this year we've tried radishes. Yep, I see the radishes. And I have a feeling it's going to be a very successful way to grow radishes even during the heat because basically the soil is always going to be moist it maintains moisture so much better than yes. a grow bag um and we've i mean we've grown potatoes have done really well in these uh, i think our purple magic molly potato harvest was probably the best harvest we've ever had for potatoes in a in a given area yeah well, we're big fans of what we call the blue barrel gardening yeah blue barrel gardening is where it's at we found ours, ah, I think we got ours from Craigslist. They were listing them for five or 10 bucks a piece. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, come on. And they last. Yes. They're very durable. Very, they're very heavy duty plastic. 
I mean, any plastic's gonna have some leaching, but it's food safe plastic. We get all the ones that have like uh, vinegar or yeah, icing or whatever exactly. in them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we got onions over here. Yeah, that's More actually, beets. we're pretty we're pretty impressed with these. These are uh, like a multiplier type onion. We've never been great at growing onions. And it's looking like this year uh, we may have some success. Well, speaking of the opposite of success, <laughs> is there a vegetable that you can't seem to grow or grow successfully here? Like, we're can we walk? Through? We're gonna have different answers. Here. Okay, well, let's walk. Let's walk through here. I want to see more as we go. Because is that your garlic over here too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's something we're very successful with. So garlic is successful. I love garlic so much. We. We uh, just got into garlic two years ago, and I think the garlic's probably going to be about a week overdue by the time I get back, because yours is getting pretty close. Just ignore all the weeds. Everywhere. Oh, <laughs> weeds are ignored. <laughs> this garden space Never even is seen still them. a work in progress. Yeah. yeah, but you've got, but there's plenty more space over here too. Once you actually well, the, the get the time. The dream is a nice tunnel, polytunnel greenhouse in the middle. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe by maybe by Christmas. Yeah. So. <laughs> Vegetables that you struggle with. What do you got? Uh, my big one's probably going to be carrots. Oh, you yeah. went the same one as me. I thought <laughs> we, we've, we've had some luck in the past, yeah. and we actually did pretty well with them in the blue barrels. But compared to other things like the beets, they they just don't do. You don't get the size out of them that you. Carrots or broccoli. Broccoli would be another one. Yes. Broccoli. Um, we cannot win against the cabbage. Uh, have you tried a lot of cauliflower? Because for me, I would say cauliflower is a little harder than broccoli. That's been our experience. Well, we've we've yeah. had beautiful cauliflower. Mm. It's it's hit and miss year to year. Yeah. yeah. We've got like kale. Um, the certain brassicas do really well. Yeah. And certain brassicas don't. Nope. Brussels sprouts. We had one good year. And we're, after that, we're experimenting with them this year. We have we have a patch. We have of them. twelve plants. Can't, plant seed. can't get the size that we want. Oh, you still got a couple scapes going to seed, yes? Well, they were oh, just we one missed somebody them. missed. <laughs> <laughs> so not you're not intentionally going to seed, but hey, they'll tell you when it's all ready. When they yeah. <laughs> they'll be pointing up here in a little bit. Yeah. I see a couple more too. So carrots, it is. Yeah, I know carrots have been a struggle for us. We don't even. I, they're not that expensive to buy. That's our. Look I hate to say well. that, but. The They're right not, time of year, you can get right. bulk carrots for so reasonable, right. and it just feels a little bit of a battle to get them to grow. So we kind of say we'll keep experimenting, is it worth it? but it's not necessarily priority. Right? Is it worth it? When you're gardening, is it about saving money? Is it about just having the best produce? What What's the rationale behind gardening in the first place? So why do it? I can answer this one, or I can try, I can answer it first. <laughs> I think I've always I'm always curious to see what his answers are going to be. I think it started way back money. Yeah. Um, and that was but, before groceries were even but, expensive. But also <laughs> also quality because going back to squash, the squash you buy in the grocery store that are expensive were usually quite small. That's true. Um, definitely a factor. I think we've gone down the road of trying to become more self-sufficient, self-sustainable, reliant or self-reliant whoever you want to there's different ways to frame that but we're kind of simplifying a bit more now so focusing on things that we can really like garlic that yeah. we can really grow enough to probably more than feed us for a year mm -hmm. um, and like the carrot example maybe skipping some of those things that yes we can we could grow them we could put the effort in but we might not get the return we'd like and so it's kind of both. So crops that you, I mean, so crops that you can get multiple harvests, like the scapes and the garlic. The, exactly. That, that's, that's, I think that's been a key for us too in recent uh, years. What is that called? Dual purpose yeah, type things. It's dual like purpose, multi-harvest kind of. It's like of. the beets. You eat the greens, you also get the beet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And man, I still can't, those beets are so beautiful. Um, yeah, no, I 100%, 100% understand that. And I think that's one of the, the struggles is trying to determine what things are going to provide the best return on investment. Mm -hmm. And also looking at what you like to eat. I saw this plant and I said, that's a really cool looking plant. The leaves look like burdock to me, but I have no idea what it is. What is this? <laughs> this is common mullein or mullein. Mullein. How you want to uh, pronounce that. Um, it's a biannual and uh, it's introduced from, uh, it's actually introduced from uh, Europe. So it's uh, not native to North America. Is this, yeah, this is edible in some way? Teas. Oh, yeah, for tea. Sort of okay. It's um, kind of on the medicinal side of things. Yeah. 
people use it uh, medicinal tea for uh, asthma or uh, that sort of thing, breathing cold. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a bit of a, so we didn't plant these. They just no, popped up. They and just we, popped and up and you kept them. them. We let them go because the part that we are collecting is the actual the flower. The flower. Okay. So, and I'm as you can see, they produce a lot of them. So. Wow. Yeah. The, yeah. I haven't seen anything fully open um, yet, but the, the other, I was like, wow, what is this? Such mm -hmm. a cool plant. You can use these too. Uh, the the leaves. The thing you have to be careful with is they have a hair on them, so you got to filter it through a coffee filter or something to make sure you don't end up with the hairs. But again, people dry it and use it in teas, or some people smoke it. And as a really as a really funny thing, some people will look at these. You can't really see it today because they're they're wet, but they're very fuzzy. And some people will look at those great big fuzzy leaves, and if you're out camping or whatever, and go, "Oh, that's oh, nice looking toilet, toilet paper." paper don't, but do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Because if those little hairs break off, <laughs> you'll know about it. You kind of answered this question already, but what are some of the vegetables you still buy from the store? And I'm not talking about like time of year. I was just in general that carrots, probably one of them. Carrots Anything else that you really? Onions. onions. Onions are a big one, although we're hopefully moving in a direction where we won't have to buy them as sure. much. I find with canning, I use a lot of onions. Yeah. There's just the, the space it would take up to grow yeah. 30 pounds worth of onions and have them actually keep long enough to use right. just doesn't. And we haven't been as su successful enough to get that 30 pounds. Yeah. No, I get that. And onions is a hit or miss for us. We'll have a year where I don't do anything. What kind of, what kind of chicken is this? That oh, is you a little silky stinkers? chicken that's not supposed to be in the garden actually. Like. Okay, well that's a that's a hint at the other video <laughs> where we focus on animals. How about that? Oh, but he's eating bugs though. <laughs> he's a young one. Hey, come over and get some of these mosquitoes. Lettuce, though. Oh yeah, that's Won't not so ya, good. Won't you, you little stinker? That's not so good. Oh yeah, well keep it. <laughs> go, out you go. Chase the chicken. <laughs> out you go. Um, any major failure or struggle that you've had? Something that just hasn't gone well that you know we talked about that a little bit earlier when we were talking just how difficult sometimes it can be with some of the failures but was this Actually, eggplant right? yes if you want to talk about not a full failure okay uh, but a challenge this year i'm actually going to talk about two one corn so the corn behind oh. us is actually popcorn oh we've okay had really hard we've had a really hard time growing sweet corn and we basically for us we've just given up on it because either a, we lose it to insects, get a lot of corn borer damage because there's a lot of commercial corn growing in the area. Or the bigger one is raccoons. And if yep. we don't put a really, really good electric fence around it, it's gone. So making the switch to the popcorn, we've found at least in one year, so this will be the second year trying it, the raccoons are not interested in it and we don't have the same insect problem. So challenge and change to, I guess, get a better outcome. Tell you what, the year the raccoon came along and ate our entire corn crop, I mean, it peeled every single. But didn't eat it. Took one bite and, then left. and flattened everything and left. And yeah. it did it to every single one. I, I don't think I've ever been that angry at an animal in my life. And I've been angry at some animals, oh, specifically yeah. voles, but man. Oh, I, yeah. Is that coal, collard greens over there? Uh, so there's a mixture. There is some broccolini that I'm trying. Oh, that's to see on the if right. The broccolini. Oh, okay. Mixed in with some kale, and then we have cabbage mm -hmm. and kohlrabi mixed with kale. That's drum drumhead. Well, cabbage. Drumhead cabbage, and then the white what kind kohlrabi. of what kind of kohlrabi? Oh, it's a white one. Just a, a white, white kohlrabi. Man. I love kohlrabi so we much. We did the per we did both. Purple Not last doesn't year. do as well for us. Nope. And we, we found that they thing? split really well, yep. they split really easy, yep. and they didn't grow nice at all. So that's we're going to scone with the white. They have the, the oh, I can't think of the name, but there's a giant one that's pretty interesting. Oh, it's not Goliath, that. I forget what it's called, but Speaking it's a giant, giant one. What was the, have you ever grown the, the giant lettuce? What was that called? Wasn't it called giant, le giant leaf lettuce? Mm -hmm. Saw it on Roots to Refuge the other day. She had giant leaf, oh no, it was basil. It was little lettuce Giant leaf, leaf basil? basil. Yeah. Looked amazing. No, I've never even heard of it. So oh, we'll have to check crazy. that out. You said that's giant cool. and that made me think about That's very it. cool. So the other challenge from this year that's kind of a not an obvious one is this behind me is a row of mung beans. Like a double row of mung beans. Oh. We've had good germination. All the seeds came up. But because we've had a warm and damp at certain times, spring and early summer, we've had a lot of earwigs. And we actually oh. had like coming from outside the garden like an army 
And what was they crazy. did was they mowed down the mung bean seedlings closest to the edge of the garden. And that's why you can see what oh, we still have yeah, left. Yeah, you're right. Area. So this has nothing to do with the beans performance. Right, it's the outside pests. Yes. Tell you yes. what, we've never grown mung beans, but earwigs have to be the most, well, one of the most disturbing looking critters <laughs> out there. And finding them when you're rowing corn oh, and you find them, find oh them my. Oh, we it's get just, them right in the crook of the lettuce. Yes. Yeah, and you're opening up, everything's great, and they pop right out on you. <laughs> I know it's not going to hurt me, but still, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, what is something that you've done? Cre I really like that setup over there. I just noticed it. Which is what? Um, the, those are the beans over oh, there? Oh, yeah, yeah, the arch, the, That's the triangle That's super arches, yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see this. It's right there. So is that cattle panel? Uh, it's uh, actually uh, the... Concrete the, thing? Yeah, the concrete. Ah. Yeah, three foot by seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Um, so what's something creative that you're really proud of? Something that you all have come up with that you that you absolutely love, whether it's a setup in the garden or just something you really like. Because there's a lot there's a lot of like reuse of pieces in here that I absolutely love. I think that's oh, fantastic. Do you want to say or do you want me to? You to, go first. I'll go first and I'm going to take you for the shot of it. So all right. So you can splice it over here. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so... I would have to say it is the I love the layout of our raised beds mm. it kind of has that feel of a um, English castle garden you know like a rose garden yeah. or something that you meander through and you've got all the archways and you got everything like that and from up top it looking down it looks really really pretty that's awesome and I know you said you've done some drone stuff so you can see some of what that looks yeah. like that's fantastic actually you can see it I was gonna say to go the up the loft oh, okay we'll we'll we'll, loft. yeah we'll check that out hundred percent and what do you got I think one of my big ones is I really like the blue barrels and I know that's very yeah. simple. The other thing for me, and it's not something that we're super dependent on, but the rain collection and the goldfish. Oh, well, let's you check those out because we, we haven't even that. looked at those. So while you talk about that, let's go check that out. All right, so this is the water collection. This is our water collection. So this is a uh, I'm thousand liters. Yeah. I forget how what that. I'm terrible at the conversion. No, that's all right. But we see them. They they sell them and, up there. Uh, it's kind of dark today, so we're not probably going to see much, but we basically keep fancy goldfish in here. Okay. And it kind of does two things. A, it's collection off our greenhouse. So oh, yeah, I see it there. It's strategically kind of close to the raised bed garden, so when we get a dry period, we've kind of got the reservoir. And B, it brings mosquitoes, and then the fish eat the mosquitoes. Yeah. And I guess the, the, the last thing is it's also adding nutrients. Of course, the fish waste, right? It's, so, and the fish do really well. Now we've got a really low stocking density, but okay. uh, I don't know. it's just kind of fun. It's like your built-in fish emulsion <laughs> right in there. That's awesome. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah, we can't see them right now. You're right. It's uh, probably turgid because of all the, the rain and such, but that's awesome. What a great idea. And then duckweed. Oh, that's duckweed? Yep. I have to, unfortunately with the goldfish, I have to bring this out from my indoor setup, but it's basically free feed for them. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and they actually usually reproduce in there too, so you end up. So you don't have to yeah, replenish. How many do you have in there right now? Uh, that one has five. Okay. Five adult black moors. Okay. What is this? That is Jerusalem artichoke. Okay, so we've been told over and over again we need to try Jerusalem artichoke. It is worth having. Yeah. The downside to it is once you plant it somewhere, you will never get rid of it. That's that's what I've heard. <laughs> so we have it sort of strategically You've kept in the area it in where the, we can in the keep box. it in a box. Yeah. Um, it tastes really good. You do have to be careful. You don't want to suddenly eat a large volume of it when you haven't been eating it because it is a bit fibrous. Oh, uh, okay. It, causes, it can cause gas issues. Okay, yeah. And discomfort. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of a really easy tuber yeah. to, uh, to grow. Now, we haven't harvested... Even though we have a lot, we haven't yeah. harvested vast quantities of it yet because okay. we've just been letting it do its so, thing. We could probably harvest. Yeah, you imagine what's underneath there right now? Yeah. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to picture that. That's yeah. awesome. All right, there is so much more that we could show here in the garden, but I'm going to send you over to Hickory Croft Farms channel. And I again, I have a link in the description of this video so you can see that. But is there anything else that you would like us to know about gardening here in, well, we said 4B in Canada that we should know before we go? Uh, I think it's there's challenges. I mean, we have a fairly short growing season. That's a big challenge. But 
things tend to be very prolific during that growing season. So you can grow a lot of food in a relatively short period of time, but it is a lot of work. <laughs> I tell, <laughs> but it's worth it. I tell you what, that is that is one of the things that I think people need to get across that shorter growing zones doesn't mean you can't grow a lot of food. And I think that Hickorycroft Farm is a great example of that. Well, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Remember, this is the first in a series of three videos where we take a look at the inner workings of this farm. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much to Steph and Chris for coming out with us today. Stay tuned for the next video. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, to remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.